Today we're going to talk about an x-ray technique that shows the lateral view of the nasal pharynx in its soft tissue. This x-ray is mainly used for children 3 to 12 years to help to check out the enlargement of adenoids, polyton tonsils, and the soft tissue around. Hi there, I'm Farida. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back to the Dental Radiology. If you find this video helpful, please like, share, comment, and subscribe my channel. And if so, thank you very much. The adenoid are glands in the roof of the nasal pharynx, so they are also called the nasal pharynx tonsils. Let's see how to do this x-ray technique. In a standing position, the patient stands laterally to the detector and the tube. The patient head is tilted a little bit to the back to have a better view of the adenoid tonsils, moving the mandible to the front and telling the patient to open his mouth. It's typically an open mouth technique, but they can also be ordered as closed mouth technique. The central x-ray passing the auditory mottis where there is the adenoid. So this is what comes out on the x-ray. Look at the key landmarks that can be helpful. Look at the cervical spine, the prevertebral shadow, the valgus, the nasal cavity, the sphenoid sinus, and the C-shaped shadow that is the adenoid. The first landmark that we're going to talk about is the vertebra. In this radiography, especially in this position, we can have a natural curvature on the vertebra that is called the cervical lordosis. The loss of this curve is important. It can be related to a sign of a disease in the head and neck like the retropharyngeal abscess and an acute epiglottitis. So this is the cervical spine. The soft tissue in front of the vertebra is called the prevertebra, that the size of the soft tissue is very important. And this is the varicular shadow. All this black area is the airway and around it is the soft tissue. And this is the epiglottitis. Here you can see the nasal cavity and in the skull base you can see the sphenoid sinus. Anything soft tissue hanging down underneath it is the adenoid. And this soft tissue that's coming down is the soft palate. So this is the adenoid. We know it's in the roof of the nasal pharynx. Let's start from the nasal cavity. It looks normal because we can see all the airway inside. Then it gets constricted and now it's wider when it's entering the trachea. So this part that is getting constricted, we have a soft tissue projection that is the adenoid. So this could be the hypertrophy of the adenoid and it's very important in children and it can be in pinging inside the airway. The hypertrophy of the adenoid can be graded. To assess adenoid enlargement on the lateral neck radiography, we can use this method. The adenoid measurement, the A represents the distance from the point of the maximal convexity of the adenoid shadow to the anterior margin of the basal occipital. And the N represents the nasal pharyngeal measurement, that is the distance between the posterior border of the heart palate and the anterior edge of the sphenooccipital secondrosis. The ratio between these two shows the enlargement of the adenoid. So if the ratio is under 0.5, it would be minimal between 0.5 and 0.6, it would be mild and between 0.63 and 0.75 would have moderate and 0.76 and 0.88 would be a severe enlargement of the adenoid. So why is the enlargement of the adenoid very important? Because it can affect the child growth and health. It can cause weight loss, block nose at night, open mouth breathing, snoring at night, saliva drooling, dull mask face, narrow pinched nostrils and the arc of the pullet can be high. 
So the early detection of the enlargement of the adenoid can help to prevent these effects. In this x-ray, the C-shaped curve is lost, so it's straight, the cervical lordosis that we talked about, so we don't see the C-shaped curve, and the airway is no longer continuing down into the pharynx. It is called the villicular cut-off sign. The epiglot appears to be like a thumb, and it's called the thumb sign. All these points is showing that there is a epiglottitis and it's an airway emergency. In this case, we see an increasing in the prevertebral soft tissue of the patient that has difficulty in breathing and has fever. Also, we have the loss of the cervical lordosis. The cervical is straight and is diagnosed with a retropharyngeal abscess and this is also an airway emergency. Okay, that was all for today. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing my channel and helping me to grow this channel. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.